This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 96 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm Gordon Brewer, and I'm so glad you have tuned in to listen. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, and I hope you will subscribe to the podcast um, and um, tune in again and also go back and listen to some other episodes. Well, I hope you're having a good week so far or weekend, whenever you might be listening to this. Um, it's um, here it is at the beginning of September, and I guess most everyone is back into fall mode, especially for those of you that have kids that might be in school and getting back into the whole new routine and just a whole new uh feel in the air. It's just, uh, it's always, uh, I, I, as I mentioned before, I think I love this time of year as much as any. I, I particularly love the fall. I can't, I just love the change of seasons and uh, seeing the leaves change and that sort of thing. We're not quite there yet here in East Tennessee. In fact, I think uh, the last few days here have been record-breaking um, temperatures. I know yesterday was just stifling. Had to go down to Knoxville yesterday to take my daughter to an appointment that she had and uh, we're getting ready to move her into an apartment in Chattanooga so life is really changing and really exciting I've got uh, got that on my agenda for uh, this weekend is getting her moved so we're packing up the U-Haul trailer and all that sort of thing and she's moving into her own apartment and she's so excited about that but also just uh, feeling a bit overwhelmed and uh, speaking of overwhelmed that's really what this episode episode is about is about how to beat the overwhelm and I'm going to we'll get to that here in a minute and I'm going to give you some thoughts and some things I've learned about how I've handled overwhelm and particularly things around learning to manage my time differently and so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you um, depending on when you're listening to this, if you haven't done so already, I want you to be sure and register for the the free live webinar I've got coming up on September the 13th. And I'm partnering with Julie Harris from Green Oak Accounting, who, by the way, they're the sponsor of this episode. And so happy to have partnered with Julie um, to do this these projects. Um, we've done some great stuff in the last few weeks. Um, we We've got been planning this webinar and it's going to be it's just straight to the point. It's just how to make money in private practice and um, so creating so the subtitle is creating um, financial success in your practice. And what we're going to be doing in this webinar, and again, it's a free webinar, it'll last about an hour. It's going to be uh, held 12 noon on September the 13th. Um, we're just going to be talking about some things that we've learned from her perspective as an accountant about private practice and also me sharing what I've learned about about all of this and some tips on how to kind of assure some uh, financial success in your practice. Also, we'll talk about some of the common mistakes that people make um, when it comes to finances in their practices. And the other thing, too, is just uh, Julie sharing what she calls her ratios for success. And these are really just benchmarks that people can look at for themselves and being able to determine the profitability and the viability of their practice from a financial side of things. I know most people, a lot of us just kind of our eyes glaze over when we start talking about finance and accounting and that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, it's an important piece of running the business of, of being in private practice. And so we want to share with you that knowledge and just talk about also in that webinar, we're going to be giving some, uh, some, uh, I guess some offers or some, um, um, some kind of a, a bonus opportunity, if you will, on the Money Matters in Private Practice course, 
which just really dives in deep. There's no way to cover this subject in just an hour, but we're going to really kind of do an introduction and really uh, teach you some concepts that are important to know. And then um, at the uh, end of the webinar, we're going to let you know how you can get the uh, the new premium version of Money Matters and Private Practice, where I teamed up with Julie to add some additional content to the course that is really uh, good stuff. So uh, you can learn about that. Um, to sign up for the webinar, just go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash how to make money. <laughs> and that's just a simple URL. There's also, when you go over to the website, just practiceoftherapy.com, there should be uh, an info bar that comes up at the top of the page that'll also get you access to sign up for the webinar. And even if you don't think you'll be able to be there that day, uh, the advantage to being in the live webinar is that you get the opportunity to ask questions and do some interaction with me and um, Julie. Um, won't be able to do that, but if you're um, not able to make it at that particular time, do sign up anyway. That way you get access to the recording of the webinar because we will be recording it, and that way you can get that access. So take a, take a look at that. Um, the other thing that I want to mention to you is, um, is again, the Money Matters and Private Practice course is out there. We've got that new premium content. So I want you to go check that out. And that's uh, practiceoftherapy.com slash money matters. And that will get you there to, to look at what the course has to offer. It's really I've spent a lot of time and there's probably now close to 10 hours of instruction there. You're really, uh, by, by going through that course, you're going to be getting uh, pretty much the equivalent of a college graduate level course just on finance and business. Um, and I've never really thought about it that way, but I was thinking about it this morning as I was walking. Is that That's one of the things about this course. So, and if you think about what it would take you to um, take a graduate course in terms of the cost of it. Uh, this is really a good deal. So um, anyway, go check that out. So um, let's see for, t uh, oh, the other thing I was going to mention is um, Brighter Vision. Um, and Brighter Vision has been a, a big supporter of me and they've been a big supporter of the podcast, has got a great campaign going on right now and it's called Fall Into Cash. And it's a mini series through the month of September in which you're going to get access to a lot of uh, great content through their website and also be able to sign up to win a bunch of free stuff. One of which is to be able to um, win the Money Matters in Private Practice course. Um, so go check that out. And the um, the URL for that is brightervisions.com slash fall into cash 2019. I believe that's correct. Um, if not, just check the check the show notes and we'll have the correct link in there. Uh, but anyway, go check that out. They, they've got some great people that have uh, partnered with myself and several other private practice consultants and people in this space. Um, just got some great stuff there. So uh, I want to commend that to you and just be sure to check that out uh, for the month of September, depending on when you're listening to this and in the year 2019. So uh, go check that out. So um, that's that. So without further ado, here we're going to jump into um, how to beat the overwhelm, beating the overwhelm in private practice. You know, if you're like me, I know there are times um, in my life when things just seem to get overwhelming. And um, as I mentioned earlier uh, in the intro to the podcast, that's one of the things that I was thinking about today when I was uh, walking and I thought, well, I'll just do a podcast episode on this, just about how to beat the overwhelm that we sometimes can find ourselves in. You know, it, 
it, it's kind of uh, <clears throat> in many ways kind of an oxymoron as a as a therapist because uh, to be talking about this and just our own overwhelm because most of what we deal with day in and day out with our clients are just people that are overwhelmed by their life circumstances and I know you know, I know for me, this first part of 2019 has just been uh, quite overwhelming, to, to be quite frank, um, frank about it uh, for me and my family and just a lot of the things that are going on with us personally. I think I'd shared in earlier episodes that my wife had uh, fallen and broke her ankle and it just really uh, kind of created some havoc in our family just because she had to spend a month in a rehab facility to get back on, literally get back on her feet. And then just dealing with my dad's um, ongoing uh, struggles with dementia and just our family having to move him into an assisted living um, situation where he's in a memory care unit and just uh, he's really finally getting some really good care, but just also the reality of the end of life issues for him. Um, you know, all of that just in and of itself is overwhelming. And then uh, then we just add to that the things that we do day in and day out with our practices. I know and just hearing from people across the country, you know, I hear different um, stories of of overwhelm. It could be that uh, your your practice is going really well and you're getting a lot of clients and um, really trying to figure out how to uh, handle all of that uh, in terms of just getting paperwork done and those kinds of things. That's one type of overwhelm and that's a that's a good type of overwhelm to to kind of have. But um, but but still, it can be overwhelming, and it can really uh, cause us to be stressed. Another type of overwhelm that I think about are those that are maybe just starting out in private practice and really trying to figure out what to focus on, and also just feeling overwhelmed by the pressure of maybe not having the income level that they would had hoped for or had really thought that would happen in their practices. And so a uh, different kind of overwhelm, but not overwhelming nonetheless. And um, so as you can see by what I'm talking about, there's just a lot of different ways in which we can tend to get overwhelmed. You know, for those of us in group practices, um, sometimes dealing with our our people in terms of our employees and just employee issues and all of that can, can also be overwhelming. But, you know, I'm I have to always remind myself, um, as I started to say earlier, and I got <laughs> got sidetracked, um, was, um, you know, people that come to us for therapy are, are people that are overwhelmed. And so we know this stuff in our heads, but I think a lot of times when it comes down to it, um, we just really um, sometimes fail to fail to practice the self-care that we need um, just around, um, you know, being overwhelmed with things in our lives. Um, you know, and I think one of the things that uh, always comes to mind to me when I think about people that we see as clients that uh, come to us and their their life situation is just overwhelming, um, you know, kind of the the direction I go with them clinically is really trying to figure out how they can break things down into smaller, more manageable pieces in terms of really, really focusing in on what they truly have control over and what they can change. And so I just say that as a reminder for us just in this whole um, caregiving realm. And for those of us that are working to build our practices and those of us that are trying to maintain our practices and juggling all the stuff that goes with that, um, is just to remind ourselves to do the self care. I know, uh, for me, I've, uh, I've taken more time off this year than I have in previous years. And it's just mainly because, uh, I've needed to do that to focus on the things that, uh, matter most in my life. And so, don't lose sight of that is, uh, I guess, really my point with this. You know, um, 
the the other thing about just breaking things down, um, one of the things that I've um, have to constantly remind myself um, is to really focus on my time management skills. Um, as you've heard from me over and over again, I'm not a naturally organized person, um, and I have to very every now and then just regroup. And it's one of the things that I've um, really taught myself to do is kind of regroup more on a daily basis rather than letting things pile up and uh, get so overwhelming. Uh, a, a metaphor that comes to mind for me is that um, we're notorious at my house is that when the mail comes, you know, I'll typically go out to my mailbox and then just kind of thumb through the through the mail as I come into the house and figure out what's important there, what can be tossed you know, if I'm if I'm really uh, paying attention to what my actions are, uh, the recycle bin is right on the way into the house. So I'll just toss all the junk mail that I'm not interested in in the in the recycle bin. Um, but then um, having a system in place for um, for putting putting those those pieces of mail into action. And one of the things that we were notorious of doing to my family is just bringing the mail in and throwing it in the mail stack. And that mail stack would just get piled up. And I'd look at the stack and say, oh, I don't really want to deal with that. Um, but the, the, again, the stack would just keep accumulating. So uh, typically what would happen is, is that, OK, I get tired of looking at the stack, say, OK, I'm going to deal with this. And so I grab the whole stack of mail and I go through it piece by piece and look at, OK, I can chuck this. This needs to be filed away. This needs to be done. Need to do something about this and that sort of thing. And that's in thinking about that metaphor, that is really what time management is about. It's about having a way to kind of capture everything that comes in. Um, several years ago, I went to a uh, um a, a not really a conference, but a workshop is what I was trying to uh, trying to remember. And it was back when I was working for an agency for the agency, and um, they were really good about sending all of their employees to a Franklin Covey uh, uh, training. And uh, for those of you that might not be familiar with that, Franklin Covey is a um, is a company that makes uh, a planner called the day timer. And I guess it's still available. I'm, well, I know it is. I saw it in office Depot the other day, but anyway, uh, one of the big things that they really kind of taught us was really figuring out how we are using our time and really kind of discerning um, whether things were important or important or not. And they, what they did is they used this grid on time management. And I've heard that it's really attributed to Dwight Eisenhower um, of just talking about he was evidently just a very good uh, user of his time and very good at time management. But if you can imagine a, a just kind of a, a four-part grid, you know, where at the top of the grid you've got important and then at the bottom of the grid, uh, the bottom of that, you've got uh, not important. And then maybe on the left hand side, you've got urgent. And then on the right hand side, it's uh, not urgent. And so you really cre create these four quadrants. And so um, in one of the quadrants, it's important and it's urgent. And those things will always come up in our lives. You know, our, kid get, our kids get sick or, um, you know, we have uh, some sort of medical emergency or some sort of uh, crisis in our family or whatever. Those are things where we have to just kind of stop what we're doing and attend to those things. Um and one of the mistakes we make in our time management is sometimes we assign urgency to stuff that's maybe important, but it's not necessarily urgent. And so being able to figure that out um, and really what you're if you live in that quadrant of things always being urgent and always being important, you're really in just kind of firefighting mode. And that will burn you out quicker than anything. And so being able to figure out whether something is really important or not and really urgent or, or not, um, when you 
when you have things handed to you is an important piece. The other quadrants is, is if we were, again, if you can visualize this uh, in your mind's eye, as I like to say, um, if you move, move down to the next quadrant on the left-hand side, that's going to be urgent but not important. So a lot of times we, again, those are things that um, we, we create maybe a little bit of frantic, uh, franticness or panic over things, uh, but they're really not that important. So uh, being able to really kind of discern that is an important piece. And then if you move to the right of that quadrant and you go into um, not important, not urgent. Now, we need to be able to spend time on those things. I think about watching Netflix. That is not important, not urgent, but it sure does do a lot to recharge our batteries. And so being able to do those things that are not urgent, not that really that important, well, they're important because they are part of self-care, but being able to focus on those things. The one thing we have to pay attention to, and I know I'm guilty of this, is spending too much time on social media. That is definitely not urgent and definitely not that important in the grand scheme of things. And so I think it's always good to remind ourselves of those things of really, if we're spending a lot of time just um, doing kind of mindless stuff, most of the time for me, if you're like me, most of the time when I'm doing those kinds of things, it's usually because I'm procrastinating. So, uh, so um, moving, moving up from that quadrant quadrant to the, to the, the top right quadrant of the, of our imaginary grid here is to really think about those things that are important, but not urgent. And that is really where we need, need to spend the um, majority of our time where we are able to fork, fo excuse me, focus on important things, but not have a sense of urgency about it. Um, that's when we can be most productive. That is when we are really in the sweet spot around being able to get things done in a meaningful way. So I just wanted to commend that concept to you. It's uh, again, it's the time time use quadrant. Um, I think there's a there's another name for it. If I can figure out what that is, I'll look I'll include it in the sh in the show notes. Um, but it's, uh, again, it's attributed to Dwight D. Eisenhower. And so um, I want you to think about those uh, those uh, those kinds of things. Um, the other thing uh, that I have really kind of learned um, during those times um, when I'm feeling most overwhelmed is, again, is to spend, again, using that concept of spending that that our time in that top right quadrant of uh, important but not urgent is really taking time every morning to plan my day. Um, I have shared with you all some um, one of the planners that I, the planner that I'm currently using, um, and I would really encourage you too to maybe consider um, trying out just an old fashioned low tech paper and pencil or paper and ink uh, planner, um, because I think what it does is it really um, causes us to slow down enough, take the urgency out of things enough to where we can really focus on our days. But anyway, I was the, the planner I'm currently using is called the Full Focus Planner, and it's um, it's made by Michael Hyatt, and it's a it's a little bit on the pricey side, and I've mentioned it before in previous episodes, but I think by spending that amount of money on it um, really kind of encourages me to use it. And it's a tool and it has a, a lot of, um, for lack of better term, a lot of great time management and productivity tools contained in the planner where you, you do like a weekly preview where you look back at your previous week, but also you go ahead and set goals for that week. And then all of the, all of the goals that you do each day are, um, really tied back to those weekly goals, which then in turn are tied back to your, to your annual or big picture goals. And so, um, that's, uh, that just was a concept that made sense for me. 
the the other thing that this planner does, um, and again, I think this is a great concept to follow and get to, to think about. If we were to think about creating a to-do list of all the things that we need to get done, I think most of us would have a pretty long list. I know um, I've got like lists of things that I need to do here at the office. I've got lists of things I need, need to do at home. I've got lists of things that I need to do out in the community and with my church activities and all those kinds of things. And um, the list can be pretty long. And if I'm looking at that whole list, again, it's very overwhelming. But I think when we can break things down into Again, smaller pieces into smaller chunks, it's much more manageable. One of the things in this um, Michael Hyatt planner that I like is it's got something called the Daily Big Three. And so that for that day, there are three things I want to accomplish, and I just write those down. And, I, and it's purposely limiting to just three because uh, more than that... Um, it's just overwhelming. And so I think that's something we have to really keep in mind is not to overwhelm ourselves by adding so many things to a list. And so, um, again, being able to plan out your day and just figure out what are the most important things for that day. So, again, I would like to uh, commend that that planner to you, uh, or just really any planner that works for you. I'm, I'm kind of got this concept of a of a planner, I'm going to say this out loud, so this will kind of force me to do it, of a planner that I think what I'm going to try to figure out how to do is make a just a, a, a product out of it. It'll probably be a digital product where you can just download this planner and then print it off as you need it. And that's something that I've done in the past as well, um, just borrowing from different, different people's concepts. One of the things that I'm learning uh, just with all these different concepts is that again, they break it down into smaller pieces and you really want to keep it simple for each day and just focus on a few things at a time each day, but also ha the planner, the whole purpose in the planner is to be able to track your progress and track what you're doing. The other thing too, um, that I'll mention just around a planner and just really just time management in in general, is that most of us, I know, are when I look at my email every day, my inbox is just completely full. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, and the thing is, is that all of us are constantly having new stuff handed to us. It's either through emails or it's through other people, maybe that we're working with will give us things that they need from us, you know, our, our partners and spouses and one, one of the things about that is to be able to have a way to capture everything that gets handed to us. You know, one way of thinking about it, and that's, a, you know, I think a, when we can think about email, um, you know, our email has an inbox and it just captures everything that comes to us. But one of the steps that we, we fail to do, I think, when we capture stuff like that is uh, we fail to delegate or assign to it what needs to be done about it. Um, one of the books that I'm a big fan of, and I would, again, recommend it to you, well, two around time management or that I think are excellent books. One is called Getting Things Done by David Allen. Um, and um, again, it's one that I would really recommend to you. In fact, I need to go back and reread it uh, because he's got just a lot of stuff in there about really figuring out how to manage our time and being able to to be more productive. The other one is The One Thing uh, by um, uh last name is Keller and then Papazan and I can't remember their first names for the life of me right now but anyway the one thing and you've heard me mention that before I know uh, Joe Sanok uh, uh, my friend Joe is a big proponent of this book in fact he I got an email from him this week just him uh, talking about the one thing uh, but um, anyway the um, the the whole concept is is that you have to have a system to capture everything. And certainly in our, um, in our, e for email, for example, um, 
we have our inboxes and it automatically captures everything. But the one one step that a lot of us fail to do is then put each everything that comes in is to do something with it. And so um, one of the things that Gary Keller points out in his book is, uh, excuse me, not Gary Keller. That is his name, Gary Keller. David Allen. <laughs> Gary Keller is the author of The One Thing. And David Allen, in Getting Things Done, talks about being able to really decide what to do with stuff that you capture in your inbox. You know, some of the stuff that comes in, we can immediately recognize, okay, we just need to need to trash that. The other thing that we can recognize about some things is that it will take us a very short time to complete that item. So he, he really says that if you can do, um, do something in two minutes or less, and it's not going to take a whole lot of mental energy or a lot of effort. Um, like for example, just responding to maybe an email request for a meeting or something like that. He says to go ahead and do it right then just to go ahead and knock it out. And then once you have done that thing, you need to take it and archive it or trash it um, after you have already dealt with it. Uh, The third thing that you can do with stuff is to obviously is to delegate it out to somebody else. There are a lot of things that uh, that come into my inbox that I just forward on to our um, our our assistant, our our administrative assistant, and I know that she will handle it. She will take care of it. Like, for example, appointment requests. She handles all our appointment requests. And so uh, occasionally I'll get people email me directly about making an appointment. I just forward it directly to her. Uh, Again, that's a two minute or less thing, but it's also delegating, um, delegating out to someone else. Other things that come in are going to be more time consuming and really what uh, David Allen calls projects. So in other words, you figure out um, what sort of project it's going to be and um, how much time it's going to take you. And those are things that we need to be putting on our calendar. Um, One of the things that we don't, uh, again, a time management thing is... um, is a lot of times we don't schedule tasks that are going to be, uh, take us some time to do. Um, so for example, with, with this podcast, usually I delegate, uh, Friday mornings. I'm rec- usually when I record the podcast, I really kind of pull it all together to send to my virtual assistant, Rachel, to do the editing and then the uploading and all that sort of thing. Usually I, I delegate, uh, on my calendar Friday mornings for that. So that's a set appointment time for me. Uh, but it's something that it's, uh, it takes some time to do. Usually it takes me about an hour to prepare a podcast, to hand it off, to delegate it to Rachel. So, um, that's, uh, there's just kind of the time that I, uh, do that. Um, so the other thing that, um, I'm really uh, trying to get into a good habit of doing as documentation for clients. That is one thing that can get us behind in a hurry as being able to uh, to document and get things done. So typically, again, I do that on Wednesday mornings is that I do uh, get all my documentation completed and done. And that's something I put on my calendar. So it's like an appointment. It's like so it's an obligation. And so it's something that is... Um, appointed. Again, those are things that are more time consuming and uh, task oriented. Um, The other thing that comes into our uh, inboxes are, if you think about all the things that we need to capture, are um, things that maybe we don't necessarily need to do right now. They don't necessarily uh, encompass any sort of project, but they might be a reference for later. So what um, what I do with that is usually if it's something like an article I want to read or a blog post post I want to read or maybe a podcast that I want to listen to later or that sort of thing, I do I I cap I I store that or reference that in uh, a couple of ways. One is that I use Evernote. 
Uh, and again, that's an application that I can highly recommend. And it's, uh, I, you know, it's just, a, again, it's a, a cloud storage device, but there's also a way to make notes and uh, just add stuff to it. Uh, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful resource. Um, again, I'll have links to that in the show, um, show summary, show notes. Um, but Evernote is one way to capture things. Another way is just if it's like a, a book I want to read or something, I just use my phone and just put it in a notes. And so I've got ongoing notes where I just capture stuff. And that's, those are really things where I receive something from someone and I just need to reference it later. So those are the those are the uh, ways that um, you handle those things. So uh, just to quickly review, and I think I might be leaving one out. So when stuff comes into your inbox or the stuff that you capture, so another thing that you might be thinking about is you might get um, uh, you might receive a phone call or a text or something from somebody um, that they're requesting something. Again, that's where the planner comes in as a way of capturing things. And the other thing, too, with emails, a lot of times there might be emails that I need to respond to um, that I don't get to right away because I know it's going to take a little time to respond to it. Um, In Gmail, which is what I use, uh, there's a a function in there for you to star things. So you really kind of go back to that. But the other thing that I do about that is if I star something, I make a note in my planner to go back and check that as a reminder or a tickler to go back and look at those things. So again, um, having a way to capture everything and then uh, being able to go back and put all of the things that you capture into action. And so the action steps are just simply these, and I'm going to make sure I've got them all. I believe there's five of them. One is is that if it's something that can be done in two minutes or less, uh, you do it immediately and just get it off, knock it out. The second thing that can be done is that something can obviously be trashed or deleted. It can just be thrown away. And again, that's something that you can do immediately. The third thing that you can do is to delegate stuff. And that is to hand it off to somebody else or really push it on to somebody else to do. In other words, it's not something that really needs your attention uh, for that. The Fourth one is to be able to uh, delegate it to a project or to assign it the time that it needs. And again, that's when you when you receive information or stuff that you need to work on is to have a way to capture that, but also to go ahead and schedule it on your calendar and to be able to put it on there so that you know that you're going to get to it. And then finally, the fifth way is just a stuff that comes in that are uh, references, a reference material, that sort of thing that's not really time time sensitive or things that uh, don't really have a time frame around them, but things that you want to be able to save for later. So that, that's basically kind of the concept around just time management and really kind of figuring out what to do uh, with with those things. So, you know, the other thing I would say about time management is that you should have a way to... Um, or just being able to not not so much time management, but being able to handle things that are overwhelming, or to have a way to process with people. Again, that's what we do day in and day out. Is people come in, people that are overwhelmed come in to see us, and they are here to process what they are overwhelmed with. And so I think it's so important for us to remember, and I think this goes back to self-care, um, is to be able to have a way to get some coaching and mentoring and even some supervision sometimes and even our own therapy. Um, I know that's something that is always time well spent for me is to be able to get t- together with like-minded people and be able to to talk about those things that are really important to us, but also being able to get that feedback and that, um, uh, you know, those multiple perspectives on things, because I think a lot of times it's really part of the overwhelm is, is that we, 
we tend to put on our own blinders about things and we don't see other possibilities around particular things that are overwhelming us. So again, being able to get feedback, to be able to process, to be able to to draw on those people that uh, maybe have been there before and to understand all of that. And that, again, as I mentioned, that's where coaching and mentoring comes in. So hopefully these have been helpful tips for you and just thinking about how to beat the overwhelm when it occurs. And um, do give yourself permission to take care of yourself. Uh, there's um, the, these, uh, the, this job, as I say all the time, is such noble work. And I think for most of us, there's a sense of calling to it. There's a sense of purpose and meaning that it brings us in our lives and all the different pieces to it, the running the business side of things, plus managing the clinical side of things, plus our home life and family life can be overwhelming. But I think when we we practice those good time management skills, when we break things down into smaller pieces, it can help us beat the overwhelm. Well, folks, I hope this has been a helpful episode for you. It's, uh, it was just solo and just me this time, but I've got some great guests lined up for some future episodes. And um, keep an ear and eye out for our 100th episode. It's coming up here soon. Um, and we're going to do some good recaps and some special stuff for that episode. I'm still working out the details of that with my virtual assistant, Rachel. And we're going to be uh, putting out a special episode uh, for our 100th episode of the Practice of Therapy podcast. It's hard to believe that it's been going on this uh, this long, two years now. And we're already up to episode 100. And more and more people are finding out about the the podcast and I'm so grateful to you for tuning in. Um, be sure to check out today's sponsor or this this episode sponsor, Green Oak Accounting. Julie and her team are just do a wonderful job in helping counselors and therapists and those in private practice navigate the whole uh, financial side of their practices and understand accounting and bookkeeping and all of that sort of thing. So go check them out at www.greenoakaccounting.com slash Gordon. And um, they'll, um, they'll help you out. You can get a free consult by going over and talking to them and let them know that you heard about the po- heard about them on the podcast. Um, also be sure and check out Brighter Visions um, Fall Into Cash campaign. Again, there'll be a link in the show notes about that. Uh, just some great giveaways there and just some great information and content on that. And I'm so thankful to Perry and his team for uh, doing all that they do to help people in private practice. And so uh, I'm just glad to be partnering with them. Um And also be sure to, uh, if you haven't done so already, be sure to register for the free webinar that's coming up on September the 13th. And that is um, practiceoftherapy.com. And just go at the top there and there's an info bar at the top and you can register for the webinar. Um, And uh, I think it will be a real informative webinar. And again, I'm, I'm partnering with my friend Julie Harris from Green Oak Accounting on that webinar. So looking forward to getting that out to you. So um, that's it for today, folks. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your week, a great weekend, depending on when you're listening to this. And we'll talk to you again here next week. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. 
It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.